Hello, everybody. It's Turbo Zone here. Is that how we do it? Yes. That's how we do shit. <laughs> That's how we do it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Community Interviewity series. Uh, today I got a special guest. The fuck are you? <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Bio Phoenix here. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hey, everyone cheers. <laughs> That'd be amazing. If you're like, if you did like a live show, I would love to like. You, it's like people are just like in the audience, quiet, and then, like like a spotlight down on the stage, and then you just walk in from the side, and you just grab the mic and say, "Hey, everybody, it's Bio Phoenix here." And then it's like you're just like roaring of yeah. applause, <laughs> and then you just walk off the other side of the stage. <laughs> 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 oh, that'd be so funny. So <laughs> uh, what's up, man? How you been? Uh, I've been pretty good. Uh, I've been been pretty good. Yeah, I've just been uh, you know doing many different things like I always do. I always try and do different things all the time. It's nice. You've been doing the opposite of me. I've been doing nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, but I'm excitement. back. I'm back with my new equipment, ready to go. Um, so if you haven't seen the interview Unity stuff before, people, or just you, Chris, Bio, um, what do you want me to call you? I'm going to ask you some questions, and then you're going to answer them. Um, in this, this episode, we have a lie detector hooked up to, to Bio Phoenix, and... Uh, I'm just kidding. No, we oh, we don't. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, oh That'd shit! That'd be a great what? episode, though, wasn't it? It's like we have a we have a lie detector, and every time he lies, he gets a, sh a shock. <laughs> <laughs> so you better watch out. Um, now nah, I'm just gonna shoot the shit with you. We'll talk some questions, and then maybe we'll just talk about you know whatever we want to talk about. Fucking, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Clever or something, Gex or something. I don't know. Um, so. Question number one is one that I ask everybody. How did you get into content creation? Uh, okay. <clears throat> it's a bit of a long story, but I, I'll try to sum it up quickly. Was that uh, this channel that I have right now is actually not the first channel that I've ever had on YouTube. I had another one way back in the day in 20, or 2006 and it was it, the name of it is so fucking stupid. You're going to laugh. It's uh, It was supposed to be iPod Freak. But I spelt freak like wrong, so it ended up coming up as iPod Freck. <laughs> iPod Freck, yeah. And the reason why I named it that was because, you know, on that year was like, you know, on my birthday, I got like my, my iPod Nano and I loved that thing. So I was just like, yeah, like I, I, I'm just, that's what I'm, that's what my fucking name is because I'm a freak for iPods now. <laughs> you know, I don't even have one anymore, but no, yeah, no, it's funny are, when I look back. You are a Freck for iPods. <laughs> I was a freck for them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was my first channel. I had I'm, I I wasn't making like traditional gaming videos like I do now. I was just doing like stupid Microsoft Sans stuff. I don't know if you remember that the text to speech thing. You yeah. just type in like random shit, and he would just say it out loud. It'd always be really funny. Yeah, I used to do stuff with that, and then my channel got taken down because it was um I had a lot of like copyrighted music, a lot of music from actual like bands and stuff. So yeah, unfortunately, I lost my channel. But then a year later, I you know I made a new channel, which is the one I have now, Bio Phoenix. And I'm by the way, because you're wondering where I got the name from, it was that not only did I just thought it just sounded like cool from um um Sonic Adventure Two with Bio Lizard, and then in you know in F Zero there was Bio Rex. So I was just like, oh, you know what, let's just do that with, like, a cool animal. And just be like, oh, yeah, Phoenix are cool. Let's just do that. Okay. So, so, yeah, that's kind of where that came from. And then, you know, then I just kind of started to try to do different things. Like, I know I originally first started out with doing an abridged series based after one of my favorite series called Deception. But, of course, that abridged series sucked. <laughs> it was really awful. I still have it on the channel for anyone that's wondering. But, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I always but then wondered, eventually, oh what? Go on. I was say, I was say, I always kind of wondered where your where your name came from. You know, I thought maybe you were doing like an RPG thing because like the you know Phoenix Down or something. Oh yeah, no, I could see that, but no, yeah, no, it was actually yeah, kind of two things. It was mostly uh, you know, Sonic Adventure Two because that was like the game I was oh, like yeah. playing a lot <laughs> of at the time. 
But yeah, but then I remembered that and it's like, oh yeah, in uh, F-Zero there was a uh, Bio-Rex too. And yeah, and that was awesome. Even though I didn't really use him a lot, but I always thought like his character was cool. <laughs> Who'd you use? Who was your main? I most, okay, outside of Cat and Falcon, obviously. I mean, I always liked using, um, um, who was it? I think it was Leon. He was like the tiger dude. Yeah. Slam. I remember I liked using him a lot. And then I also liked, uh, what's the fucking, I can never like remember like the damn names on some of those characters. As much as I love the series, there's just some of them that like, I just, I just forget sometimes, but I mostly know them just from the way how like their machines look. I used the most... skeleton guy a lot. That was my, that was my man. Yes. Yeah, 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 I know. I loved him too. He was Sa awesome. Sans, yeah. right? Sans from, uh, Undertale. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, no, he was my main. <laughs> was the skeleton dude. Um, yeah, that's funny. You know, I've heard a lot about, like, people's channels getting taken down because of the, the copyrighted music um, throughout the years. And I guess I've just been lucky because I, I have, in my old Frick Effect videos, I have a shit ton of copyrighted music. And I've yeah. only ever been well... flagged. Well, see, that's the thing. Nowadays, they don't really do it as much anymore, unless it's, like, pl you know, blatantly obvious that you just upload the whole thing. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it was mainly, like, in, like, 2009 was when they first introduced that whole copyright thing when Google bought yeah. out YouTube. And that was when, like, they were at their, their worst days where everything was getting taken down. And, you know, oh, no, my Naruto a AMV. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we only got in trouble one time because we used um, "Cherry on My Wayward Son." And oh, from Kansas. Yeah, okay. we we were doing. I'm, I never watched the show, so I don't know anything about it. But we, D Damon, really wanted to do it. We were doing like a a parody of the of Supernatural. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So we were doing a parody of that show, and for a part of the video, the other part of the video was just a regular sketch. And we used that song, and the that got us in trouble. So we just took the video down and cut out that entire part, and just just did the rest of the video. Um, so we we've, we've always like held a grudge against Can the band Kansas because they took over one of our videos. Uh, it's a shame because they're a good band. I really like a lot of their stuff, even oh, no, though the too. main I love Canvas, uh, Canvas Kansas. Yeah, I, even though the main guy literally is like over up in his overalls and shit, he looks goofy. <laughs> So, Chris, Bio, buddy, you're known for doing some weird shit. Talking about some weird shit. So I'm gonna ask you the second question: What's what's the weirdest game you've ever reviewed? The weirdest game I ever reviewed. Okay, that's a it's <laughs> quite you, a few you, of them. Only pick one. Wait, which one's the weirdest? Okay. Um. Actually, I haven't talked about this one in a while. I know I was going to mention that that one PC-98 game, the controversial one, but I feel like I talk about that one a fair bit, though. The other one that I'm thinking of, I don't talk about it as much, is um, it's a game on PS1 called King of Crusher, where it's literally, you're like this guy who, uh, it's on PS1, by the way, and obviously it's Japan only, because I guess we just weren't good enough to get it back then. <laughs> but uh, it's about this dude who gets bitten by a fly, and then, like, this dude gets, like, so, like, pissed that he ends up, like, destroying, like, everything. And, like, at so the first level, you're literally destroying, like, your own house. <laughs> and it's, like, and, and no joke, like, there's actually a part where you actually see, like, your family, like, running out of the house. And I'm just, like, oh, my God, like, this is kind of fucked up. But then, like, as it, like, goes further, it gets even more progressively weirder. Like, you go to, like, your, your job office and you're destroying everything there. And then you, your guy eventually transforms into, like, a wolf man. And then you end up, like, destroying, like, a whole town. And then it goes even more and more ridiculous. And it's, like, yeah, it's, it's, uh... It's a wild ride, and it was very, very funny, but I will say the game, unfortunately, was not very good. It's definitely one of those Aww. games that, like, you play it for the weirdness more so than the gameplay. I mean, the gameplay is, like, you know, it's not good, but it's not, like, unplayable. It's just, like, very, like, mediocre, but it's just so ridiculous that you kind of want to play more of it. So, yeah, I like I said, I haven't talked about that one in a while, and I and I thought that was a very fun video to work on. 
Sounds like one of those games you just kind of put on for a laugh. <laughs> it's just, or you're just oh, like, yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a game that you show it to people who don't yeah. know what it is. Like, here, play this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you have to check out this game, and then you put in this, this shitty game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, question number three. Uh, and, and I guess you can start maybe at the start of BioPhoenix for this question. Um, how has your creation method changed since you started? Okay, when it comes to the reviews, the very first one I ever did was on Knuckles Chaotix on the 32X. Yeah! Fuck yeah! <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, that was the very first bit. <laughs> yeah, that was the very first game I covered because, you know, I always thought that game was very overlooked for the time. And, you know, well, especially compared to the other games in the series. And then, of course, I also loved, like, Espio and Vector. So I always thought, like, oh, they got their own game. Well, you know, I should, like, talk about it with people. And, um, yeah, so how everything changed is that, well, first of all, I used a lot of scripts. I used to write out a whole script, like, my, like, everything word for word. I used to just read off of it, and I don't like the way how it sounded. I think it just sounds like crap. Actually, mm -hmm. I remember getting a comment on one of my recent videos, someone telling me I should go use a script, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, no, you don't want that. <laughs> So, yeah, so I used to use a script a lot, and I just don't like the way how I sounded. I sounded like, like, a monotone robot, like, oh my god, like, like, what is this shit? But, uh, so that's one thing that definitely changed. I don't do that anymore. I'd rather just talk about things, like, sort of off the cuff, but I do try to, like, you know, write down, like, stuff. Like, not, like, exact word for word, but I try to write down, like, a like a bullet point of something and be like, okay, I can talk about this thing, and this thing, and this thing, and there you go. And just kind of go off of that. And I feel like that works a lot better because I don't sound like fucking like stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm the same way. I don't really script either. Um, and the, and the times that I have, it's been like very unnatural for me. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll like do the same thing where I'll like write down a few notes or like I'll like think of like an intro. Like, OK, what's like I'm going to set the tone for the video and then I'll just go from there, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, some people could work good with scripts, some people don't. Unfortunately, I don't for the most part, unless, you know, it comes to, like, you know, like, when I do the whole, like, the Trails of Cold Steel bridge thing. Like, I mean, I write a whole script for that, but that's a whole different thing, though. It's true. And we could talk about that um, as well. Um, you know, I, we didn't bring that up as either, but along with BioPhoenix, you do your bridge series, which, uh, is on yeah, which, my, my which new episode one. are you yep. on now? Well, there's four of them up right now. I literally just done the finished the script for episode five. And so I'm um, just now all I got to do is just do like the on screen effects. I like to do those ahead of time because those take a while to do. And plus, it's harder to do them while you're doing like everything else in them. So I do them first and then I got to wait for getting more voice lines in, which is always the longest part. But, you know, I understand because you know, everyone has different shit going on in their lives and, you know, everyone's doing it for free and it's all volunteer work. So, you know, yeah. it is what it is. But with that said, though, yeah, I'm, I think it's a it was a fun thing that uh, like I like I just mentioned, I used to make one on my main channel that like really sucked. But I was like a teenager or now, like, I've, like, experienced a lot more with editing and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I think it's a lot better now. At least I think it's better. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, um, it's, yeah. It's, it's really good. I mean, uh, I'll I'll leave um, links to both your regular channel and the abridged series in, in the description for people to check out if they haven't checked it out. But uh, the abridged series, I have a starring role. Yeah, as a as the, a, uh, the train guy. As the train guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've i've had maybe uh a couple lines <laughs> i mean you played a couple random people but the train guy oh, is like that's stake your role <laughs> I'm, I'm the train guy so if you want to see me as a train guy there you go um yeah <laughs> okay i'm on question four uh what is your favorite aspect of being a content creator uh, my favorite aspect is really just the fact that, well, you know, just talking with other people like around the world about like all these different things that I like to talk about, whether it be like, you know, the games that I'm covering, the anime that I've covered or, uh, you know, um, like some like I know in my pickup videos recently, I've been, you know, including other shit that I've been getting like, you know, movies and books and manga and all that. And I like like talking about all that with other people. 
And, uh, you know, the live streaming, like, since they've included that, I really enjoy that, like, a lot. Like, I really enjoy just talking with random people and just shooting the shit while playing a video game and just, you know, or playing a video game and making fun of it with other people, you know, like, that type of stuff. I really just enjoy doing that a lot. And, um, yeah, it's really just interacting with other people. But then, of course, I also just enjoy just, like, putting stuff together and, like, you know, like, putting together, like, a whole video where I just talk about something. <laughs> Yeah, the community aspects of that I can relate to as well. It's just, you know, having, even if you're just live streaming and there's like one person watching, like it's just, it still makes it so, oh, yeah. so, so much fun, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's no same. Yeah, no, I've actually, I'm not gonna lie, even though my channel almost has like 3k subs, there's even times where like, there's only like maybe like one or two people in like the chat sometimes. It all depends on the day that I'm doing it. And the timing, but uh, yeah, but no, even when I only have like one or two people, like it's still like fun, you know. I have no problems with that. I've never done pickup videos. I thought it would be hilarious if I did a pickup video, and my first pickup video was literally what I got at the grocery store. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> so I'd be like, uh, that I got this gallon of almond milk. Um, it's uh, it's unsweetened. <laughs> it's just, it's just... and it has like five calories. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, that, that that's funny shit. Yeah, no, I kind of understand what you mean with like not doing pickup videos because I know they're kind of like dime a dozen. And of course, another thing I'll go out and say is that I feel like there's a lot of people that do them in a very boring way. I always feel like the way how I do them is that I, I hope I don't come off as boring, but I, I hope I can like, you know, talk about something, get someone interested in wanting to check something out or, you know, talk about like some sort of memory I have with it. For example, like I'd pick up a game or something. I'd be like, oh, yeah, this is a game I rented as a kid. I remember I did this one thing where like I like blew up the entire room and everyone died in the end <laughs> i don't know <laughs> oh yeah i mean i, I mean I, I don't want to knock anybody that does do pickup videos i just personally i don't think i could make it interesting if you know okay that's fair I yeah. yeah i i did the game of the day thing for a little bit and even like 60 seconds of me talking about a like holding the game and talking about it and i'm like uh uh, <laughs> uh pikmin's fun <laughs> You know? It's fun. <laughs> no, I, I get it. That's understandable. Yeah, I will say I do like your table of ranking, though. I think that's really fun. Oh yeah, that's something I want to bring back soon. I like doing those. Those are funny. Yeah. Those are hard though yeah. because like, and like, like unless I change the format, like I have to like actually have the stuff out and like set it up and you know. Yeah, I like it when you have like a substitute with like another game that like, you always use the thirty two X games. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I don't have the game, so here's Metalhead on 32X or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I remember I gave you, like, an idea of you, like, you should make, like, a parody cover and, like, just draw it out as, like, poorly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of humor, what's the funniest moment in any of your live streams? Oh, um... There's a few. Um... I know one of the funniest ones that I can remember, and I do have this saved on my uh, on one of my backup channels. It's um, do you remember the game Rad on PS2? Yeah, yeah, it was made by the same people that made EDF. Yeah. Yeah, that game. Yeah. Well, so I remember I played it for the very first time. Like, I never played it before. I just always, like, knew about it because of its shitty voice acting, but I never played it until, like, that stream. And then I remember I was just, like, wandering around the town, not sure what to do. And there was a part where there's, like, a train that goes by, and I was wondering, I was like, oh, I wonder if you could, like get run over by this thing and then i did and like my character just like falls over and then as soon as she falls over there's like blood just goes like flying like <laughs> everywhere and there's like an excessive amount almost as if it's like some like you know like rated m game and i'm just like holy shit and i like, couldn't stop laughing because i was like not expecting that to happen oh man i died that was like That's probably funny. one of the funniest moments i can remember i've always wanted to play that game too it's like one of those it's one of those games, yeah. Like I've I've only ever seen like YouTube videos and stuff about it. Like I've never actually given it a try. But I love that. Yeah, kind of I've super played shit. it, and the controls in it are weird as shit. But 
the game is so stupid and funny that it kind of okay. keeps you playing kind of like king of crusher you know it's one of those games it's obviously it's not good but you play it because of it, how like ridiculous it is yeah it's how like stupid it is <laughs> yeah but the game does have a lot of impressive ideas though for the time like it has a lot of um you know interesting uh physics mechanics for the time is, so especially it's, for a low budget game it's it's by sandlot Right. Yeah. It, well, it's made by Sandlot. I think it was published by Age Tech, if mm. I remember right. Yeah, it was early PS2. How did and yeah, I, do? did Age Tech do Guitaru Man? Is that how I know? No, him? that was Koei. Who the hell did Guitaru Man? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, who the hell? What did Age Tech do? I'm trying to think. Of, I have something that that they do that they did. Everest? Um, they they did a couple of uh, FromSoft games. They did yeah, um it, Evergrace. It, yeah, I that's the one I have. That's Age Tech. I was like, I've seen that logo. But I'm not, I was trying to think of where. Uh, yeah, Evergrace is the game I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they've done a lot of different crap. But, you know, they have done nah, from no soft games, crap. which is funny. <laughs> okay, well, it's fun crap, okay? It's good crap. It's a crap Dude, that I love. It's, it's a good crap. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, you do your uh, main channel, which is, you know, live stream, reviews, pickups, whatever you want to do over there. And then you do your bridge series. Given... This in this dream scenario that we're about to go into, you have all the time in the world, all the resources in the world. What's your dream project? Um, I don't really know. Maybe if I like, I probably would like to like make like a movie or make like an anime thing or something or some sort of like animated like series or something. I, I would love to do something like that. Obviously, I would try. I I wouldn't like make that like a whole whole like YouTube thing. I would just make that like a whole thing in general. Just be like, yo, like let's let's make like a fucking like sh like a big series together. Oh yeah, I said like dream project, so it could, it could be literally anything. So yeah. yeah, well that's one, and you know, or if it can't make it like an anime or like a movie, I I also thought about like oh it could be like a video game or it could be like a, like a book or something. What what kind of video game would you make? What what genre? Um, I would love to make a uh, like an RPG. I'd love to make something like that. Like I'd make um, I don't know. I would probably make it like maybe like sort of turn based. Like I always thought like oh like make like a like have like a unique combat system, sort of like Shadow Hearts, but obviously not like rip that off, but like something similar to that where it's like very interactive. Or if not that, then I'd just make just a full fledged like action RPG, like sort of like like East or uh, like the okay. like the Tales of Games or something. I've always wanted to make a action RPG that takes place just in real life, and it starts with a guy like in 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 an office building, and he has to like use whatever's around him as weapons, and <laughs> he he like actually has to like defeat his boss as the first boss. And it's just him <laughs> fighting his way through life. <laughs> I would actually be funny. I'd play that. <laughs> like I like I imagine like one of the first weapons you get is like you know when you like take a stapler and you just open it up. Like he's holding it like that and he can like use oh, the yeah. stapler. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's creative and fun. Yeah. But like people are like, well, that exists. It's like persona and shit. I'm like, no, 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 not like magic shit and like demons and other no no no. I'm talking it's just a dude with a stapler. Like there's no there's no magic or anything involved or you know otherworldly yeah. stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's just a guy <laughs> you know i don't even think in persona they even have like a stapler thing not that i can remember anyways <laughs> a staple that'd be awesome i i, I could see them doing like a staple gun. well because like in persona when they have the guns they like turn into real guns right Oh so, yeah, yeah, that's so, Persona Three. Yeah, yeah. So they can do like a you have like a staple gun, and it can turn into like a real gun in the, <laughs> or it can stay as a staple gun. It just shoots staples at the demons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I remember I was watching your stream you did recently, the one where you played Gex, and you played some other stuff too. Uh, this Gex was the highlight. Um, and and you were talking about if you made the Bio Phoenix movie, and I thought that was really entertaining just to hear like 
how you would make a Bio Phoenix movie. And I got me thinking about like how I would make like a Turbo Zone movie. <laughs> oh, so you liked my idea of like having like Bio Hipster be like the guy who's going to um like steal like a like a video game that never been dumped before, yeah. like a, like an only like one release thing. And and I remember the the one stupid thing I always remembered most about that idea was uh was him saying, "I'm going to build a wall and make my Patreons pay for it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was cracking me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about that. Um, I just love the idea of like YouTube channels like getting movies. Um and you know, and and the ones that have haven't been that good, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, like like the AVGN one, yeah. The AVGN one or like uh all the nostalgia critic ones he did, you know, or I guess it was like Ch Channel Awesome or whatever they had those, you know, and stuff for the Did you know that Smosh made a movie? Yeah, well, yeah, they did. I don't know how much involvement they had in it, but they did. And it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine not, no, but I, I just heard about it. I'm just like, what the fuck, really? <laughs> yeah. There's like a few of them that did, like the uh, atop the fourth wall, that one's atrocious. And Angry Joe's in it. <laughs> so oh, I I wouldn't know. It's, it's it's not good. It's that's not good at all. That like if you ever want to go down a rabbit hole, just look read shit about Lincara and oh my god, he, that that guy's a fucking douchebag anyway. But um, <laughs> yeah, his his movie's <laughs> like the most pretentious thing I ever I've ever seen. It's also, it's also shit. So <laughs> um, already, I I think I've only seen like one YouTube channel that actually had a good movie, and it's um. A channel that I've watched a lot since I was it, it actually inspired me to make sketches. It was um F and D films. They did a Kickstarter or like a GoFundMe or something for a movie and they actually made it. But it, what was hilarious was their idea for the movie was it was about them making a movie. And before the movie came out, like two weeks before, they put out a a, a, a video that was apologizing. They were like, you know, we, we did a GoFundMe, we raised like I don't know how many thousand, ten thousand dollars or something, and but I'm sorry, we can't complete the movie. And on their social media, they had pictures from them going on vacation and stuff. So everybody thought that they just stole the money and ran off. So they were all so like, people were doing like reactions. They were like, "What the fuck, FND? You pieces of shit!" The movie is about them doing a, a, a GoFundMe to make a movie and then stealing all the money. That's the plot of the movie, and then people oh. were ba people were baited into it in real life, and then it, and then like a, like a week later they revealed the the trailer for the movie. It was fucking genius. And I was like, this is the smartest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, that is actually really funny the way how they did that. That's clever. I, I like that. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like fucked up, but it's funny though. <laughs> oh no, it's great, and 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 the movie itself is actually pretty good. I, it's on Amazon. Um, Perfil. It's a, it's called It's All Good, I think, and it's it's actually a, a pretty fun movie. But like that's the only time I've ever seen a YouTube channel make a movie, and like it actually turned out pretty good. Okay, I've never even like I knew that. I'm not actually not familiar with that channel. So do you, do you remember back in the day, back in like this? I'm talking like 2007, eight. There was a yep. video just called Annoying that was about like two roommates, like you know, like a, like a buck bed, and like the guy on top was like annoying the guy on the bottom i don't know it was like a viral video i don't remember that or not that was like one of their um, videos that i that sounds like something i might have seen back then but i don't remember like exactly but i'm sure that's i might have seen it yeah it was like a, a like a viral thing they did and then they went on to like actually make like actual sketches and stuff but anyway i don't want to talk about them the whole time because I, I could but <laughs> but anyway yeah and so i don't know what the hell the plot of the turbo zone movie would be maybe if i can I'm going to Arby's or something. I don't know. <laughs> How terrible of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, yeah, it's about me going to the last Arby's to get a meat mountain before they close. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, because all the Arby's like got like destroyed or something. <laughs> or they all got shut down because, I don't know, like whoever managed it, managed Arby's like fucked up. <laughs> so, um, okay, so... This is the last question, and then we can just shoot the shit afterwards, you know, if you want to. Uh, question right. number seven is, what's a fun fact about yourself that your audience may not know? Okay, um, that one... Okay, so I've... I, since because, you know, I've done a lot of streams, I usually have talked about a lot about, like, myself on those that a lot of people... That I usually wouldn't talk about in my videos. 
So I feel like that's something that even like someone like, you know, like Terry, who's like been around like most of my streams, like he would probably know this or anyone else who's been around me long enough would know, but not like, you know, most people though. I just said the fact that I actually do, um, I do make my own uh, cosplays. Like I actually know how to yeah. sew and like make clothing and such. And that's something that I do want to do for like my living is uh, be able to just like make like my own little like brand of like, you know, stuff that I can just like sew up together. Have you tried like opening like a, I don't know, like an Etsy or something? We can do that sort of thing. I've thought about it. Yeah, it just it just takes a, a lot a lot of like stuff and resources I gotta do. And plus, I I still don't think I'm like at that level yet that I can just like whip up something in like five seconds. Like, oh, there you go, you're done. <laughs> but make, um, me a, make me a Crash Bandicoot cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all right crash bandicoot all you need is just a pair of jeans and there you go some gloves some like fingerless gloves right but jeans and fingerless gloves yes <laughs> yeah and then that that's it but but yeah no seriously though like i um like that's something that that i do enjoy doing and you know and it's uh you know everyone says i'm good at it so i'm just like all right i mean like yeah. i think uh i think it's good like i've made I some pretty interesting stuff that uh, took me a lot of time to do I think some on like social media, I've seen some of your your stuff, and this it's, it's pretty cool. I, I I don't have the talent to do any of that, <laughs> so yeah. Like I said, it's uh, it takes time. <laughs> it takes time to do. Yeah. What's your uh? So what's your favorite cosplay you ever did? Um. Well, probably like the one that probably turned out the best would probably be the first one I did, and that was uh, Guo Huai from uh, Dynasty Warriors Seven. But the thing is, is I can't take all the credit for that one because that was when I first started, and uh, one of my mom's friends um, was like a was a big seamstress, like you know, like way long ago. So um, she actually helped me out with that one a lot. So because of that, I can't take all the credit for it. But so that one was was really cool. But then the other one that I also um, the, OK, like the one that I liked the most that I like completed myself was um, was uh, Alphonse from um, uh, Grow Lancer 4. It's a PSP RPG that I really like. And um, yeah, I, I really like the way how that one turned out, like uh, trying to do like the, the painted crosses on his like little cuffs. That was pretty tough, but I did it. <laughs> nice. I've, I've, I don't know which ones I've seen, but I've seen some of them on like social media and they're all really cool. Yeah, the the one um, the one that I just talked about, Alphonse, it's like a big orange like jacket. I think that's the one I've seen on social on your yeah. social media and stuff before. Yeah, really it's cool. like orange, but it has like gold trim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going for my Crash Bandicoot. I'm gonna spray paint myself orange. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just gonna put on a pair of shorts, tennis shoes, and fingerless gloves. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Your spin around of boxes too. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And then the, wear the the Aku Aku mask. I would love to go to like a warehouse where like people are actually trying to work, and I just run in and spin through like some boxes and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you remember those Mega sixty four videos where they used oh. to like do the video game shit in real life? Yeah. That should be something they should do. <laughs> I love the the um the Resident Evil um guy what's it called the the shop the, yeah that the guy has a name i don't remember his name but yeah he he did that one and yeah they actually got like yeah. arrested for that one well, no, not arrested but they got like in trouble for that one <laughs> yeah i i remember that yeah and then there was uh the solid snake one and then there was um the tetris one i think my favorite one they ever did was when kingdom hearts 3 was coming out they didn't dress up but uh rocco what's his name right R rocco the big guy um he just went out and he just went up to people in like in, in public and just started rambling off like things that were happening in kingdom hearts and like conversations so he'd be like yeah then like uh you know, then it turns out that like Aqua and 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 and, 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 and like Namine were inside of Sora the whole time. And then it's a, you know, they started like it, you know that they were just like talking about their life. You know, they're like, yeah, my grandkids coming in. And it's just like that's exactly what I thought. Like, why did you know, like why like why did oh, they this? And then you know, <laughs> it's so funny. I don't remember the name of the video, but it was cracking with me up because it was just like rambling random Kingdom Hearts stuff to people in public, and most of them would like ignore it, or or they would like just be like, yeah, my grandson's coming. in or something 
Oh, that's, that's great. I actually don't remember if I saw that one, but I should go see that now because that's that sounds like great time. Because I literally haven't seen that channel in, in like ages. So, what they do? Any- well, no, no, they still do stuff. They do like the they did like those Dragon Ball and like ten minutes or whatever videos where they do like the live action Dragon Ball sketches, like uh, sketches. And then I think recently they did a uh, Evangelion, right? And then they do, like, okay. live-action versions. But uh, the, the Dragon Ball ones always crack me the fuck up. Because they do, like, a whole arc in ten minutes. And it's all live-action. <laughs> and I love... My, my favorite thing from the whole series was the Cell saga. To, for Cell, for, like, you know, before he's perfect Cell, for Cell's head, they used a cut-up basketball for part of the orange That's <laughs> cracking me that long. <laughs> that, that's amazing. But those, those are great videos if you, people want to go watch those <laughs> okay one thing i do want to mention quickly about cell that always made me laugh was that so i'll, I'll be straight up with you guys i unfortunately didn't get into dragon ball like as a kid i had got into it like when i was like a teenager when i was actually able to watch everything like online rather than just having to wait a week for a fucking episode because let me tell you trying to get into dragon ball z back then if you didn't start from the very beginning you were kind of fucked because oh, yeah. like there was a lot of like long like parts in it and you know if you're watching right in the middle you wouldn't know what the fuck is going on so anyways that's why i didn't watch it back then but um but i remember in one of my magazines i want to say it was either the Yu Gi Oh magazine i had or the pokemon one i had i can't remember which one it was one of those two they had like a part that was talking about like dragon ball z and they had a picture of cell and i'm just like is that that like piccolo god that everyone was talking about because he looks like a pickle <laughs> big giant pickle (laughs) and every time i tell that to people everyone would always just laugh i think i i I got into dragon ball i want to say like somewhere around like the 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 frieza saga like or like 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 early on like like ginyu force era you know time uh i want to say one of my friends was watching it on tv after school and he was like dude you have to check out this show and i was like what and then I was just watching Dragon Ball. <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the first episode I was, but I remember being like, "What the hell is this? This is awesome!" <laughs> so, it's like, uh, like I never seen like anime before. I was just like, "This is so cool." <laughs> okay, that see, that's actually not a bad place to start when you first get into Dragon Ball. See, for me, the very first episode I remember watching of Dragon Ball Z was the one where uh, where Goku was training in Hell after he died from Raditz. So uh... I was just like what the fuck is happening? Like, why is he, like, running around in this, like, weird world, and then there's, like, other people, like, around just being like, oh, Goku, where are you? And I'm just like, what the fuck? I don't know much about Canadian TV. Was it censored for you guys? Or was it the... Was it the Home for Infinite Losers, or whatever the hell it was called, over here? Oh, wait, for Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, because Hell was censored over here. Because it, it wasn't Hell. It was like Home of Infinite Oh, Losers. um, I, I honestly, I wouldn't, I don't remember exactly. Because like I said, I didn't watch it a lot back then. Because like I said, it was just way too confusing for me as, as, uh, as a kid okay. just trying to watch it. So I don't remember per se. But I, th- I want to say it might have been censored over here too. It probably <laughs> was. Because, you know, I know a lot of those shows like that, they, they no, always yeah. were censored. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a huge One Piece fan, and somehow I'm still a One Piece fan, even though I started watching it with four kids, One Piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious, going back to that now. I've, I've gone back and watched some of those episodes of the four kids dub, and I'm like, this is, like, g- garbage. And then, like, um, I love the fact that the four kids dub ends, I think it they get through alabaster i don't know how much you, you know you watch one piece but but they get through no, the alabaster. I, I watched like the first 50 episodes and i was um, just like yeah i'm not into this so they get to the alabaster <laughs> arc and then there's like an arc with these like this like rainbow mist area well, it was it's not really an arc it's like a three episode thing but there's like a cliffhanger on like the end of like like one of the episodes where another ship is falling onto the their ship the you know the sunny mm-hmm. And that's where the four kids one ends. That's the last episode. It's like, ah! And then it's just like nothing. They didn't do anything after that. So if you're just watching the four kids dub, they probably just died because a ship fell on them. <laughs> <laughs> they died at the end. <laughs> uh, it's like, this is how it should have ended. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, that is funny. No, I actually remember watching the four kids dub of that, um, you know, around when it came out. And like, I, I even like I said, even back then, I wasn't sure what to think of it, though. You know, the, the freaking pirate rap. 
Oh, yeah. yeah let's, don't give it up, Luffy. Yeah. Don't give it up, Zoro. That's all, yeah. Don't give it up, Luffy. <laughs> I fucking love that one. Um. Oh, yeah, then Sanji. Sanji sounded like this. <laughs> hey, pirate boy. <laughs> oh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I like, I've gone back and watched all that. And like, I've, I've gone back and watched a few of those, like four kids stuffs, um, like Sonic X, which is also one they just fucking, they just obliterated that show too. Um, they did, but for some reason, I actually did still kind of liked it though, for what it was. You loved it. I do. I fucking loved it as a kid, but I've gone back and I've watched the, the Japanese version and I'm like, holy shit, they just fucking nuked this show. <laughs> oh yeah no they definitely everything. did but i'm just yeah <laughs> or like i i never got into Yu-Gi-Oh, but i know there's that infamous um one where instead of the guys having the guns they're like pointing <laughs> yeah i yeah, know yeah they censored the guns yeah like they're just like pointing at kaiba yeah there's also another scene that that was really weird in Yu-Gi-Oh, where like there's a part where yugi and kaiba have to face each other again and yugi's like about to like beat him so then he ends up like walking to the ledge and he's like in the japanese version he says like i'm gonna like kill myself but because you know they couldn't say that type of shit, he had to make up. They had to make up this whole thing where it's like, Yugi, if you make your attack, the the whole like building is gonna vibrate, and I'm gonna like fall off. <laughs> Which is like so stupid. I kind of miss. I kind of miss like that era of anime. You know, I like because like now it's like you know I can go on, but whatever, and watch the newest episode of whatever show subbed or watch stuff that's been dubbed properly but like i kind of miss that kind of like localization that just completely changes a show over like i used to watch like the dub of fucking boba bo 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 and i was like my favorite yes. thing as a kid that show's fucking hilarious no i and... love it too it's it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> and i think that partially is because of the dub because they had to censor out a lot of like the more adult things from boba bo and stuff well, that and plus a lot of, like, the humor in that show is very Japanese, and a lot yeah. of people over here, like, wouldn't get most of it. Because, you know, like, a lot of... I know one of the biggest things that's always, like, kind of weird with that is, um, you know, a lot of Japanese people find that the whole, like, naming people after food is, like, really funny. But over here, it's just looked at as just being, like, fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I know Akira Toriyama does that with all his shit, so... Yeah. Yeah, no, I know, like, stuff like that, they, they had to change, too, and it's not because of, like, I wouldn't say it's censorship, I think it's just, you know, different culture scene. Yeah, it's kind of the, partly well, the reason why certain shows never came out over here officially. Well, yeah, well, that, I mean, that was before, like, anime culture really took off over here, anyway, you know? Like, a lot of those shows <laughs> that came over. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, nowadays, I think people know now, but, you know, back then, like, with, like, you know, like, when the internet was not, like the biggest thing yet yeah like not everyone was using it and you know there's no social media per se what was your what was like the first anime you ever got into okay you're gonna probably like laugh but then no, again you laugh. probably already know but it's uh my, the first anime i remember watching was sailor moon because yeah, I, I had an older sailor sister moon. yeah yeah no, no no but i'm just saying like it's like totally not the most manly shit ever <laughs> No, dude, last year I bought the original series on, on, on uh, fucking Blu-ray. Uh, oh, well, so, there you go. Sad, awesome. I mean, I was fine. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was one of the first things I ever watched. And um, yeah, it was, uh, like I said, at the time, I, I, I really liked it, despite it being very girly looking. <laughs> very girly man looking. <laughs> I don't know what the first anime I ever got into. It probably was Dragon Ball. But I remember... I've told the story before, but I'll, I'll I'll tell it again real fast. I used to watch Bleach, and how I did that was I had a VCR, and I would set because I wasn't allowed to stay up like past like nine or ten. This was I was in like middle school maybe, and I used to set my VCR to record an hour of um, Adult Swim over here, and this hour they would show an episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, an episode of Robot Chicken, and then an episode like an episode of Bleach. So okay. I would record that every night and then watch it after school and then set the tape back to record the the, the next night. So I would watch Bleach that way. Um, okay. And this was around the time that, like, Naruto was getting big. So, like, all the kids in school were, like, doing the Naruto run with the fucking headbands and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, guys, Bleach. And they're all like, shut up. <laughs> I'll be honest. Between those two shows, I think I got more into Bleach than I did Naruto. 
Well, yeah, well, I will to say, me, I, I was in, like, middle school, so, like, Bleach was, like, fucking edgy as hell. It was cool. And then I was yeah. watching Naruto, and I was like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that uh, that whole era of uh, trying to watch anime was very, very interesting. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, I wasn't able to like stay up like super super late, and most of the stuff that I that that I remember like looking up years later that would have played around that time, yeah, I didn't watch it back then. So I had to like watch it like you know years later to catch up with it. Yeah, if I had like a bigger VHS tape or something, or like multiple VCRs, I'm sure I could have watched more. But I again, I wasn't allowed to stay up either, and I could only record like an hour worth of show. So like I had to record like. That hour, because I was like, I want to see the the Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Robot Chicken, because they were like 15 minutes long for those. I was like, and then I want to watch Bleach. But like later on, I like got into like some of the other shows that they showed the that I sadly didn't get into. So I had like an era. Oh, yeah. I had, whenever Netflix first started um, streaming, their their streaming thing, I, I I got one of those Wii discs. That like you yep. stream, and I watched a fuck ton of anime at that point because it was just like I have free access to all this anime now. I'm just gonna binge it nice. all. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that was also one they used to have like a lot. I feel like now yeah. they don't have like as much as they used to, or at least they still have like a lot. But of course, they've also taken a lot out. So they have a lot more original stuff now too. Um, but back back then, Netflix was like the only option. So like everything was on Netflix. So yeah, like, yeah. So like that's where I got into watching a lot of shows, dude. My 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 favorite anime is um, Ghost in the Shell, and that's where I started watching it. Was I started I watched the original movie, then I watched um, um the first Series, season of uh, Complex. Stand Alone Complex. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, holy shit, I love this. And then like, and now I own everything Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, it's and, a good one. It is a yeah. good one. And they're they're still actually going on Netflix because they have like that weird three D animated series, which is like the. I guess the third season of Standalone Complex, which I'm not sure how I feel about the animation still. It's been like two seasons and I'm still like, uh, 3D anime creeps me out. So. Yeah, very, they've very rarely they've gotten it to look good, I feel like. Yeah, I can. It's just, it looks uncanny, you know? Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more about the, the, the hand drawn stuff. Yeah, I'm like, it looks like I'm watching like a, like a video game cutscene. I don't know, man. I think actually the Ghost in the Shell PS2 game might have better cutscenes than the <laughs> Netflix. Oh, series. does it really? <laughs> it might look better. <laughs> Nam <sighs> Namco Bandai might have done a better job, or no, it wasn't. It was um, Kavya. I forget who. Oh, Kavya. Oh, yeah, the same yeah, people yeah, that was fucking Dragon Guard. <laughs> yeah, Nier, Dragon Guard, Bullet Witch. Yeah, <laughs> such great well, classics. Resident, <laughs> Resident Evil uh, rail shooter games. The Chronicle games. They also did the sequel to Win Back. I don't know if you're really? familiar with Win Back. Yeah, I know Win Back, the the sixty four game. I I've never played the sequel. I I know they did that one. Yeah, yeah, they they made uh, Win Back too. Yeah. Is it any good? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. like the highest they ever got was near. Then they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the whole Yoko Taro thing, and well, look where he is now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to start talking about near because I'll just talk about near for an hour. Yeah, yeah. no, I hear you, but no, I I I do enjoy uh, that that series. Yeah, this will turn from uh, an 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 interview with you into me rambling about near for <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> But that's what's fun to talk to you, man, because you 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 know more about this kind of ob obscure stuff, you know. So. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you know, I I like talking about that type of stuff because you know, like, who else is going to talk about it? Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> well, <that's always laughs> well, maybe not like, nobody, but very few. That's always been super. Like, I've I, I've always loved like learning about obscure games or like just like learning about publishers and stuff. Like, I talk to people that like play games, but like, I'll be like. 
this development team made this, and they also made a bunch of other games, and they don't know anything about like development teams. <laughs> oh yeah, like one thing I actually found out about recently. I don't know if you knew this, but uh, so recent, well, like a couple months ago, I did review a game called Overblood. It was a uh, like a PS One survival horror. This one actually did come out over here, so it is an English release game. And I found out that uh, that the guy who made that game funded the company uh, Level Five. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, really? <laughs> yeah, Level. very, very interesting. <laughs> level 5, that's a weird one too, man. I'm, it's like every time... It's like, when I think of Level 5, I think of like Dragon Quest and stuff, you know, and like uh, uh the latent games Dark and Cloud. stuff. Yeah, but like... As, it, it feels like every once in a while, I'll start up a random game, and, and then I'll just see the Level 5 logo, and I'll be like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've heard that that company is uh like almost actually went out of business a couple times i've heard oh, that's crazy yeah because uh, i know they had like a couple like uh, game projects that are canceled or ones that are like they're not canceled but they just like you know they announced them like years ago and there's like nothing was it um said about them wasn't yokai watch theirs yes i think so I, th I think so, or at least they, I think they did like one of them or something. I I don't know. Uh, don't quote me on that, but because I'm not I'm not a, a, a yokai watch dude. <laughs> you you you're kidding me. You're not a yokai watch dude. <laughs> no, I'm not the yokai watch dude. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be messing with me right now. Um, you know, like what's the game on 3ds? I I talked about in an upcoming episode of Bud Mappers. I, I talked about a game by them on Is 3ds. It, um, Fantasy Life. No, it was a uh, Liberation Maiden, because um, I was okay. talking about Studio Fifty One. Um, but what's the, what's the other one? There, there's a they did Little Battlers Experience. Yep, I played and that. I, that game's I pretty solid. I love that game, dude. That game's so like stupidly fun, and it was like yeah, I like it. That game came out over here, and it was like nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I actually remember when they showed the trailer for that, I was kind of like, oh, this kind of looks like custom robos, but not. And yeah. and I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm cool with that. Because, you know, That's... I don't know if we're ever going to get an actual custom robos, but this is the second best thing to it. And yeah, it's it's not bad. Yeah, it's like in the vein of like custom robo or like virtual on, but like a, a Saturday morning cartoon RPG almost like. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely reminded me of uh, Metabots. If you remember that yeah, show, yeah, Metabot. I I never watched the show, but I had the toys because you could okay you move the you know you could like take off the limbs and stuff and like yep that was fun. I I never I never watched a single episode of that show in my life, but the toys are super cool, so I had those. <laughs> Okay, yeah. No, that that that's understandable. I watched the show a little bit. I unfortunately I never had the toys. I wanted them, but you know they're expensive, and you know I I was poor. <laughs> so I, I I feel like toys from that era too were really cool. I had a bunch of toys from the um the Mega Man series. They they did some for X Seven, and I had some X Seven toys, and then they did some for the Battle Network anime. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yep. Yeah, and I had some of those too. And I wish I still had them. I don't know what the hell happened to those toys, but like I remember for X7 I had one of Zero and one of everybody's favorite Axel. Um <laughs> <laughs> And they were like really cool figures. <laughs> <laughs> uh well I mean it is Mega Man 7, you know. <laughs> X7 man, come or on. X X7. <laughs> yeah, come on, it's great. <laughs> If you ever did like an X uh nine, do you think it'd be a two D or three D? They I think they might go back to two D on that one. I don't know. Or maybe like two point five or five D, like you know. Like sort of like Mega Man eleven. Well, X eight was like two point five D. That game's not terrible. No, well, I've never played X eight. I've always wanted to, because I know that one has a very interesting voice cast. Where they actually got the people that voiced in G Gundam to be in it, oh, and I'm just cool. like, ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, I want to hear uh, freaking uh, Master Asia voice freaking Sigma. <laughs> yeah, I I played that one on the Legacy Collection some, and it seemed like a solid game. I I haven't really played through it all the way, so. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just think most people just don't talk about it because, like, F X7 was such, like, a disaster that people, like, didn't want to give the X8 a try, I guess. But, Honestly, you know, for after... I think after X4 it just kind of like loses my attention. So <laughs> Yeah, that that I can understand too. Yeah, X5 and 6. I'll be honest, I can never remember which one is X5 and which one is X6. I know I played one of them, but I forget which one. <laughs> I had a friend that had Command Mission, and I think I watched him play it one day and I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> I actually think that game's kind of cool from what I played. Yeah. yeah. I think now I'd be into it. Back then I didn't play RPGs, so I was like, this isn't Mega Man. <laughs> like, well, I mean, it's not game? that far much different than uh, the Battle Network games. That's true. You know what? You got me there. <laughs> but, yeah. I, well, yeah. <laughs> so. Man, no, well, that, that game was pretty interesting. I always wanted to play through more of it, but just never did. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a shame they didn't put that one on the Legacy Collection thing. They should have included it on the second one, because, like, the second Legacy Collection for X is, like, yeah, like, kind of not the as the good games. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, here's the rest of it. And they did the same thing for, for Mega Man. They were, like, the Mega Man Legacy Collection, and then, and then Legacy 2 was, like, I don't know, here's the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> And like the the people that because like I I feel like Mega Man Legacy two it's like Mega Man seven eight nine and ten and the, all all four of those games have very different fan bases so it's like me it was like oh cool eight I could play eight again <laughs> you know? but I, yeah. I know somebody was like oh cool seven and then you know then somebody was like oh cool nine and ten <laughs> yeah it feels like they were like here's the bottom of the barrel like we we didn't throw in battle. The the was it the the the, the, the arcade game we we didn't throw in the racing game or soccer yeah, battle and chase <laughs> yeah battle and chase or soccer we just or not even Mega Man at base it's just these four games enjoy <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man soccer <laughs> uh, I mean the idea of Mega Man soccer is as dumb as it sounds like it is sound like something that could be like a cool game if done right but. It'd yeah, be a cool game if it's done right. <laughs> oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> Mega Man Soccer is not one of those games. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, thanks for joining me, dude, on this uh, community interview. Unity and shooting the shit, talking about anime. Oh yep, talking about all sorts of different shit. And uh, yeah, um, I wasn't able to send you the pigeon in time, but uh, oh, hope yeah. I hope it made it over there. I got my window open, just you know, so you could fly in. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, no, I was I was worried that like the pigeon might get eaten by something. It's been getting cold at night too, so I've just but I left the window open so you can get in here. <laughs> All right, it's like, yeah. a, it's like a pigeon's like dive bomb. <laughs> into my living room. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you got a message. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm gonna end. The recording. Any anything you want to say before we? Oh shit! Anything you want to say before we go? What have I done? Well, bye everybody. <laughs> <laughs>